is your desire. You should have the need, the want, that I want to do this. And alongside the desire, you need to then take the steps, isn't it? Physically, if I say I'm really thirsty, I've got a desire. I've got that need, but I'm not moving. I'm not doing anything. Then what will happen? The tap, will it come to your mouth? The tap, or will the water start dropping into you? Has it ever happened like this to you? You have to get up. Yes, you, otherwise nobody would come out of the bed. The food was to come there, the food would just come to the bed. Oh, I'm just lying down, stay lying down. That's it. My desire was there, it's fulfilled. So every objective, desire, so you need a desire, for every objective to meet that, you have to have a desire, a need, that you have a want. A want. And then after that is the amal, the action, the physical part. It's correct, isn't it? So this is what Ramadan is telling us as well. Ramadan is teaching us this. This is what Ramadan is explaining to us totally. That if you have that desire, if you have a desire and you ask, you have a desire to attain paradise, to be saved from hell. Every Muslim has this desire, isn't it? This purpose. So for this, then these two things are important. If you have this target. That after you have this target, this objective, if you don't move, then you won't get this desire. You won't get this desire. So this is what is lacking inside us. Oh, that when a person has a need, a requirement, if he doesn't make effort for it, then it's not a need, it's not a desire, it's a false desire. He's lying. He doesn't have that desire. That after having the desire, he definitely moves to attain that. That's only then does that desire get fulfilled. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the same thing. That, that look, there's a verse as well of the Qur'an, if it comes to my mind, then uh, maybe just correct it here and there, because I don't have the Qur'an in front of me. So in this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's clearly told us. In the, I'll read the verse in between, um, just to tell you the subject. So Allah says in this verse that those people who have the desire for truth, talab of haq, they request haq, they want Allah Ta'ala's pleasure, they want Jannah, they want paradise, they want to be saved from hell, they want to be solid, true Muslim. This is our desires, these are our desires, aren't they? Our wants. That they should be, I don't know if we've got them, we don't know. Allah says those people who have these, those who have this desire, then Allah says totally fine. Allah Ta'ala says, I've given you, that I've prepared you for this hadayah. Allah says, I've prepared something for you. That if you have that desire for truth, the haq, whoever has that desire, that wants, then he will never lose out that person. He will not be devoid of guidance. Allah is guaranteeing this. Allah says, I've prepared the solution for you. And such a solution, Allah says, that if you have the desire, the want of haq, then Allah Ta'ala says, I've prepared a great solution, a great method. Subulus salam Allah Ta'ala says, that all the paths of goodness will open up for you. That if you have the right desire, and you take the physical steps, then the goodness, the doors of goodness will open for you. مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ nur The sins that you are stuck in, the sins that you are drowning in, what will happen? I will take you out from there and I'll bring you to the light of guidance. Yes, and then it says, the third thing here is then to you, the straight and honest path will be given to you for which you are doing du'as and praying, supplicating. So if you have the, the desire for haq, if you have the desire for truth, then you will never go astray, Allah says Never will he go off track. Never can it be that if he has a desire, I want to be good, I want to be fine. For example, your worldly desires, Allah Ta'ala even allows those to be fulfilled. So the purpose that you've been created for, and Allah Ta'ala says, will he not allow you to fulfill that? The reality is that we are thieves. We are solid thieves, real thieves. That inside us, we don't have a desire to be improved. We don't want to pray salah. We don't want to save ourselves from the sins. We don't desire that. Yes, so Allah Ta'ala is guaranteed in the Qur'an. 
That if you have the desire, I want to leave the sins, I want to become a good human being, and that this, you, you keep on pleading for this, keep on asking for this. Yes? Yeah, if you have a desire, don't need to cry for that, but if you have that desire, so real, if you have that demand, if you have that desire for the truth, for the haq, then he will definitely go to the second position, he'll move and he'll implement something for them. And the person who is false, who is lying, then he, there are means and resources for him also. There, there, there are resources, what a big guarantee Allah Ta'ala is saying, that whatever, whoever desires the haq, the truth, the right way, it's not that Allah says, I've prepared the solution for your guidance, and the doors of goodness will open up for you. What does salamti mean? That Allah says, the, the, the path to Jannah will be opened up for you. And the path to be safe from the sins, I will take you towards those solutions. And sirat e mustaqim I'll keep you on that path as well, Allah says. I'll keep you on that path. How? Now here, the same verse I'm telling you, as I said to you, that this is the subject. Faith, he has no religion, whatever religion he is, if he takes any translation, he's seeking guidance, I've seen in my life, that he will not depart until he recites the kalim. Brothers, the thing that Allah Ta'ala is saying clearly, That the person who reads Quran asks for guidance, he will never get up without the bed. He'll keep the bed. He will never leave the salah in jama'ah. He will never consume haram. The Quran, this is the Quran. Yes, Allah says, I reveal it. Min Allahi. This Quran is come from Allah. Nurum wa kitabum mubin. Yahadibihi. And the function of the Quran is to give hidayah. As the first page is telling us this. Udallil muttaqeen. So how can it be that there are so many people wandering around, so many animals, monkeys, men and women, they despite believing in Allah, they leave salah, they take off the parda, they eat haram, their faces are spoiled, their face spoil their parents, they spoil their libas, their dress, their attire, yeah, their methodology, their lifestyle, they've spoiled it. They make jokes out of the deen, they mock the deen. Yes, they take half the deen, they say, oh, we're Muslim, they do something one day, next day they do something else. Yes, so simple, straightforward. What is Islam? Islam is five times salah, pray, and don't commit the sins. This is Islam, there's a guarantee of the Holy Prophet wasallam that not a minor Muslim, he'll become a wali of Allah before he leaves the world. Subhanallah. But our niyyah is not there, our intention is not there. So this hard is so hard, is it? Five times we need to adopt the means, use the means, and here we lose out. This is where we lose. We say we have this uh, intention, Allah, I want to pray, so everyone's doing these du'as at the moment. Everyone's doing du'as, isn't it? Allah, make me an namazi. Allah, let me leave the sins. Allah, make me this. I want to become Muslim. I want to become a good person. This is the desire. But the Quran says after desire, what do you need to do? What you need to do, physical implementation. This is the sunnah the ilahi, the sunnah of our creator. That, that person, he, I will never give to him just based on empty desires. And I say that I just want it on desires. So here's the quarrel now. Here's the dispute. Crying, screaming, running around. I want this done, I want this done. It won't happen. On his own. Do you understand what I'm saying? Such a human being, such people, they are deception. I want to be religious. Oh, the lengthy du'as they ask for. Sunnat Allah is this, that if you move a little bit, make effort. Just make some effort. Movement. Allah says, I will enable you. Don't worry, that's me. At the end of the day, will allow you. That all the difficulties in your deen, they will come via me. Allah says, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has started Ramadan with the rahmah, with the mercy. The first portion of Ramadan is Allah's mercy. Allah says, you just make near. You won't be able to do this. You won't be able to, because the lowest level of practicing, remember this was our topic, previous topic, that the weakest person, you won't be able to do too much in the whole year. You didn't pray one salah. How will you pray 20 rakats? How? Yes, you, you are like an animal grazing like an animal. How will you keep the fast? You have no motto, no vision, no plan. Yes, how will you stay uh, hungry? How will you do the fast? So Allah Ta'ala for this, what did He select? What did He select? Not azab, not strictness, not severity. Allah selected His rahmah, mercy in the beginning of Ramadan. Subhanallah. So what we're told here is that don't go towards depression, don't lose hope, don't give up. You are insane, you are drowning in the world. You have issues, you have problems, you have struggles in the world. There's no doubt, there are struggles, there are challenges. So for that, you need to do something. 
You need to do an action for them. What is that? That you need to make a bit of effort, a little bit of movement, a little bit of hard work to attain that path that you desire. Yes? So three things Allah has mentioned in the Qur'an. That I will show him the paths of salamat, I will give him hidayah, guidance, and I will take him out of dhulumat, darkness of sin. And Allah says, I will introduce him, bring him to my irfan, my marifa, high level of rewards, I will give to him light, illumination. Two things you need to do. Just one thing. What is that? That turn back towards the Qur'an, towards the guidance. It's hadayah for you, the Qur'an. Go onto that path. Okay, understood? So then you can say, okay, fine, I've got the desire, and I started to read the Qur'an. Say subhanallah. Then why can we not implement this target that we've got then, if we're doing this? Are you not reading 15 times Qur'an over, but you've got no beard? You've got no parda, the sister? No, we've got the dress code of those who are strangers. Our faces are like monkeys, apes. Then what are we saying? Ramadan have come, I want Allah's forgiveness. Tell me. Yes, so can you see anything of a person in this? Why? Because we're reciting Quran, reading Quran. You've got the Quran in your hand. Yes, Allah Ta'ala said this, isn't it? That Allah isn't just an empty Quran. This is why I said that I've sent you Quran. Allah says, "Ka jaakum min Allahi nurun wa kitabun mubin." Allah Taala says that I've given you the kitab. Allah says, "Read it, read it a lot." But the, and this Quran will give you guidance, and you are trying, but your trying is a failure at the moment because you've only taken one thing, which is the kitab. But still, you are short of something. Can you read the Quran in the darkness? Can you? Can you read the Quran in darkness? That for example, you got Quran in your hand and you're sat in a closed room. Show me if it's dark. Can you read the Quran? Will you be able to recite? No, you got the Quran in your hand. For that, what do you need? You need the light, illumination. You need the light, isn't it? If you're in the dark room, as soon as you put the light on, you start reading the Quran, recitation. Because you can see it. Light off, you stop reading Quran, you can't read the kitab. So Allah Ta'ala says that for this kitab, I have prepared a light illumination for this kitab. For this book, Qad Jaqum, Nuru, Allah says, Wah, and, and it's not just the Nur of the kitab of the Quran, Wah comes as well, also. The respected scholars from the pious predecessors of Hadith, I'm not a Mufassir commentator, but I'm just presenting what I've learned in your service. So Allah Ta'ala has divided the kitab and the nur. There are two parts. So he stated kitab, without the lie, you cannot read it in the darkness. You can read it. If you read it, then you will go towards dalalat, the wretchedness, curse. You will not get the guidance. You won't know what it is. So hidayah, you will get from this kitab, the Qur'an. But you will get it, how? That when you read the kitab in the light, the light that I've sent to you, Allah Ta'ala says, under that light, if you understand the kitab. Do you understand the point? Maybe what I'm saying? So for this reason, we don't get the hidayah from the Qur'an. We don't get guidance. That's why the Qur'an doesn't guide us. Why? Because we're not using the light that Allah has given to read the Qur'an. What is that light? That is the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam. All of his sunnahs, the light from all of his sunnahs. What the light is it? So two things Allah says I've sent to you. I sent my Prophet... My Nabi, who, he is the light of guidance. His every action, his every sunnah is the light, the lamp that will shed light on the Qur'an to assist you to practice the Qur'an. That's it. What else? What's the conclusion then? Is that until you don't take hold of the ittiba, obedience to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu you don't implement his sunnahs, then you cannot understand the Qur'an. You cannot. The Holy Prophet ﷺ, with the light of his guidance, you can understand the Qur'an. Those who want guidance, Allah has promised, I'll give you guidance. Have you made the intention? And the next action, what you do have to do then, second step, is make an effort. So then what is the effort for this line Allah Ta'ala defines? Nurum. Then not take the Qur'an empty, take and run towards the Holy Prophet ﷺ for the solution. Where do you have to go? Run to the Holy Prophet ﷺ. And take hold of and adopt his method of his lifestyle. O Prophet of Allah, say this. Niyyah. 
that I'm going to live my life according to your lifestyle, your appearance, the look of your parents, your eating, your food, your lifestyle, and your earnings, and everything. And you say, just like my Holy Prophet ﷺ said, in the light of that guidance, I will start to adopt that lifestyle now. And this is called moving, making an effort. So it's very hard, isn't it, to do this. How can I follow this? Obviously, this is the deen, the true deen. First Allah says, Noor, then the kitab. Qajjakum, Nooru wa kitabun bain. So first condition is the amal of the sunnah, then go to the Quran, reading it. And take bayah, pledge allegiance at his hand, and do tawbah. Repent. Oh, but um, the Holy Prophet said, how can I do tawbah with him? Subhanallah. They even a preparation for that. That the person who already has taken his hand, you take his hand today. The person who already has taken his hand, you take his hand. Then it's like you have taken the hand of the Prophet Subhanallah. The Shaykh's hand, you don't put your hand in the hand of the Shaykh, your hand is going, your hand is ultimately going to Allah. When you put your hand in the hand of the Shaykh, your hand is ultimately going to Allah. This is not some small thing doing tawbah in the hand of the Shaykh doing tawbah, taking bayah. This Allah Ta'ala says, is the person who has the desire for the truth. Now I will show him the true path. The first proof Allah Ta'ala gives, that when you go to a wali Allah, you say, I want to do tawbah, I want to repent, I want to become a good human being. Please help me, please help me. I want to make a contract with you. Please help me to become a good human being. Now you tell me, you got me, does he not recite these verses? He, he doesn't read these verses, he has a desire. So then he makes the effort. He takes steps, physical steps. So that please, Sheikh, help me to become pure and clean. The tariqah that the Quran has told me is go. What do, what's that verse again? That I read regularly. Ya ayyuhal, that's the surah Mumtahana. The verse that if you want to do tawbah, Allah Ta'ala says if you want to repent. Was the method Allah has given to us? The prescription, Allahu Akbar. That... My beloved Nabi, the believing women will come to you. They'll be Muslims, they'll pray Salah. They're not disbelievers with regards to them. Either, but they want to, that if you want to be saved from the sins and do tawbah, then you'll have to, they'll come to you to do tawbah. They do enable them, give them the bayah, pledge of allegiance, allow them to do tawbah. And the sheikh today does the same thing. Sometimes from here a person comes, sometimes from here a person comes. There's a system, isn't it? That, what do we call it? Alhamdulillah, Allah shan glory, that as the time of shaitan is progressing, and increasing, Allah Ta'ala also creates the tools to break that shaitan. So Allah Ta'ala shaykh, sees the shaykh in the corner, gives him a phone, the whole dunya people become Muslim. Through the technology. Today, and we take a loan, and a person doesn't know when he's taking the loan, very easily he takes a loan, 10,000, give to me 15,000, he takes it. But when it's time to give it back, then he makes excuses or delays, or where shall I give from? I don't have any money. And very bad thing this, isn't it? Such a bad thing that Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if an individual, any person, he passes away like this, that he took a loan, then his soul is floating, not in paradise does he go, nor in hell, it's just floating in between. And the people who have died, they're in their graves and they went in this way. They went in this way, they didn't repay the loan. Mahazah sahab used to say, that qaraz is even beyond farad. Farad has one point, one issue, and with the qaraz, with the loan, there's two points. Two issues. And Allah's Nabi Sallallahu said that his body, his soul is remains floated because after taking the loan, he didn't repay back. So this masla also, you need to listen to this. So when you take the loan from somebody and that loan has come over you,